All right, welcome back to Mr. Piels with Algebra 2. This is Unit 3, Topic 1, SLT number 6. Uh, and we are going to be applying sine and cosine ratios to the unit circle. Uh, starting off with a quick review warm-up of sine and cosine. So we have this triangle. We learned in the last topic about the um, Ferris wheel. So we are given this location on the circle, which is at 2, which means x is 2, and the square root of 5, which is give or take about 2.2. Keep in mind that's an irrational number, which makes sense. This is 2, and this is up 2.2. Uh, so sine is y over r, so that's square root of 5 over the radius. Now the radius here is from here to here. So we need to know what that radius is. We can use Pythagorean theorem. So 2 squared is 4, square root of 5 squared is 5 equals the radius squared. Add those two together, you get 9. And the square root of 9 is 3. Three. So this has to be 3. So we know the radius is 3. Cosine would be 2 over 3. That's x over r. And then to find theta itself, well, tangent, first of all, is y over x. So in this case, that would be square root of 5 over 2. And to find theta, I could just simply use the inverse of one of these. It doesn't matter really which one it is. So if I do inverse tangent of 2 thirds, so that's second, I'm sorry, I said tangent, inverse cosine of 2 divided by 3, press enter, and you get about 48.19 degrees, give or take, uh, is about this, which makes sense because that would be in the first quartile, which it is. All right, so trigonometric functions. So it's very similar to what we had just done a second ago. I'm going to have to skip through a few of these questions because... Oh, first of all, they're kind of redundant. They are doing the same thing we just did with the warm-up. Plus, there's a lot more to get to in this video. Um, same thing we're going here. The only difference between this question and the first question, which is the reason why I want to do this one also, is because it's in the second quadrant. So I know it's not really realistic, but this says negative 7, and this will be 24 because that's x, that's y. Uh, once again, it doesn't really look like that at all because it looks like it's way further to the left as it is up, but that doesn't matter. But then we need to know the radius. Um, so you should know your Pythagorean triplet. 7, 24, 25 is one of the triplets. Or you can use Pythagorean theorem, do 7 squared plus 24 squared equals the radius squared, and you'll solve for r, and it happens to be 25. So sine is y over r, so that's 24 over 25. Cosine is x over r. And tangent is y over x, 24 over 25. Five. I'm sorry, not, not 24 over 25, y over x. So 24 over negative 7. Okay, uh, if I wanted to find theta, I could use any one of these. It doesn't really matter which one it is. And keep in mind, this is going to give us our reference angle. It's not going to give us theta. Uh, so to find theta, we'll have to do an extra step. So I'm going to use inverse sine of 24 divided by 25. And that gives me about 73.7 give or take. All right, so if that's our reference angle, now remember this is in the second quadrant, so you have to do 180 minus the 73.7 degree angle. Uh, so if you do 180 degrees, which would be a straight angle, and you take away this reference angle, then you're left with the angle of theta, which is about 106.3 degrees. Uh, the same, this will be done just like the one, so that, there's no reason for me to do that question as well. Um, negative 3, 5, so, you, so if it's cosine, you know it's x over r, so you know the radius, uh, the radius is always going to be a positive number, so the x means it's going left 3, so you know this is going to be in quadrant 2, As a matter of fact it even says it's quadrant 2 right there, so you know it's going to be here, so you're trying to find this angle right here, so let's call that theta, in order to do that you got to find this reference angle, once you found this reference angle then you can subtract it from 1. 80. All right, so this is sine, which means it's y over r. So you know it's going down, so you know it's going to be over here in the third quadrant. So you're trying to find this, you do the exact same thing. So uh, this is 24, 7, 24, 25 again. So you know that this um, sine is y. So you know the x is negative 7, the y is negative 24, and uh, this is going to be 25. So then you can use that to find this information. All right, so how does this all apply to the unit circle? And like I said, I'm going to be skipping through some of this as well. So here's 
uh, a unit circle because it has a radius of one. Look right here, from here and here and here, it's all one. Uh, sine is always y over r, cosine is x over r, just a bit of review. So if we have sine of y right here, keep in mind that this is 0.10, this is 0, 1, this is negative 1, 0, and this is 0, negative 1. That's just where these four points lie. Now, if I'm going to use cosine of 0 degrees, which is right here, that's radius is always 1, keep in mind. So cosine is x over r, so the x is 1, so that's 1 over 1. The sine would be y over r, so that's 0 over 1. So sine of 0 degrees is sine of zero degrees is zero. Cosine of zero degrees is one because one divided by one is one. If you do 90 degrees, which is this point right here, you're gonna see a pattern going on here. Cosine, once again, is x over r, so that's zero over one, and this would be one over one. So now this is one, and this is zero. When you get over to here, uh, this is negative 1 over 1, and this is 0 over 1. So it goes 0 to 1, back to 0. And you can probably guess what the next one's going to be, because it's going to go by the exact same pattern as this. This is negative 1, so cosine of this one is 0 over 1, which is 0, so back to 0 again. And sine would be negative 1 over 1, which is negative 1. So they're doing the exact same pattern, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. So every other one is 0, and the 1s and negative 1s are just going back and forth. And if you keep going around in 90 degrees, it keeps following that same pattern. Now what about, that's 90 degrees. Um, I'm really gonna go quickly through this. All this is to basically get you to understand that all circles are gonna be the exact same. Since all circles are similar, it's gonna to apply to all circles. So the inner circle is gonna be six over six or eight over eight. If we are uh, talking about, let's see, height of the y over r, so that would be sine. Um, so that would be the same thing, whether it's six over six or eight over eight, it's gonna be both one. So it doesn't matter how big the circle is, it's always gonna be the exact same. So, or zero over six and zero over eight are the exact same thing as well. All right, uh, recall once again, the radius is one, so that's right here. Um, so if we're trying to do this, trying to do quarters, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna skip through this because this just gets you the idea, no I'm not. So this is about circumference. The formula for circumference is two times pi times radius. If you remember that from geometry, now remember the radius is one. So the circumference is two pi. So the distance it takes to get all the way around is two pi. Now let's say we don't wanna go all the way around. Let's say we only go halfway around. Will that be half the distance? Half of two pi is just pi, one pi. One pi, two pi. 1 pi is halfway around. Now, what if I only want to go halfway to halfway around, which is basically a quarter of the way around? So I only want to go half of a pi, so that's pi over 2, or 1 half pi, same thing. Uh, so that's 1 half pi, 2 halves pi, this would be 3 halves pi, and this would be 4 halves pi, but that's really the exact same thing as 2, because 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now let's say I only want to go by halves, let's say I want to go by eighths. Um, so I'm sorry, I want to go by fourths. So this would be one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, four fourths of pi. So this is one pi over four, or just pi over four. One fourth pi, two fourths pi, three fourths pi, four fourths pi, or four divided by four is one. Five fourths pi, six fourths pi, seven fourths pi. And there you go, you've just built yourself a unit circle. And it's basically the exact same thing I just did here a second ago. So what the point of this is to match them up and to see which ones are equal to each other, but I think I just did a pretty good job of that describing that. So this would be zero degrees, let me just do it here. So this is zero degrees, this is two pi radians, uh, 45 degrees is equal to pi over four radians. Uh, this would be 90 degrees. This would be uh, 45 more than that would be 135 degrees. This is 180 degrees plus 30, 45 more. Um, let's see, that would be 225 degrees, 270, and then 300 and 
15 degrees. Right? Four, five. Yes, that's right. Okay, can I squeeze in any more of this video? I'm at 10 minutes. Okay, so here is good examples of the unit circles. Everything I just showed you a second ago shows you all the degrees, shows you all the ones in radians, and then you've got all the coordinates which would match up to those. Um, so Pythagorean identity is always going to be equal to 1. So cosine squared of pi over 8 plus sine squared of pi over 8 uh, is going to be equal to 1. Um, I'm not going to get too much into that right now. I'm just rushed for time. Uh, conversions, this should have also been discussed in geometry already. So when you're changing degrees to radians, you simply multiply by pi over 180, so that's pi radians. Now, if you think about it, the reason why that works is because pi radians is half a circle. 180 degrees is also half a circle. So 300 times pi divided by 180, and then you can simplify that. 300 over 180 is 5 thirds. Same thing goes here. So 140 times pi divided by 180. Well, 140 over 180 can be simplified to 7 ninths. Now, let's say you want to convert to radians to degrees. Then you do the exact opposite. You multiply by 180 over pi. Uh, one, eight, well, the, first of all, the pi's cancel each other out. And then 180 divided by 3 is 60. Uh, once again, this is something that you can also look up in my geometry videos because I've also done them there. Um, and, okay, so I guess something had to be given here in order to solve this. I'm actually going to stop right there because I think I've already covered so many SLTs by this point. Thanks again for watching. Please give it a like to help you learn something about um, finding, what were we doing? We were use, finding the unit circle by using our sine and cosine ratios that we had learned up to this point. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day.